Hi everyone, it's me, Western Mass Wonder Woman, uh, with a new update. Um, some good news, some good stuff in this update. Pretty exciting. Um, let's see, so the last update was 11 days after my surgery. It's now three... Friday was three weeks, it's Monday, so that was... 22, 23, 24, 20, 25 days since my surgery? I think. So we're about, um, anyway, three weeks definitely uh, in a couple of days. Post surgery, post um, mastectomy, and uh, the last update, I still had one drain in, so um, that drain came out. I did have a minor possible infection like the very next day so uh as excited as it was to get the drain out then it was immediately tempered by oh this might be infected now um went on a short course of antibiotics so and that has been resolved so we're back on the healing train um that infection was in the right breast which is the one that still had the drain in it and which is also the one that did not have cancer so um again i just think that that breast was mad at me for for getting rid of it um, but it is what it is it is um, so it's we're, we're back on the healing wagon so um, things are going in the right direction I do have another appointment with the um, physical the plastic surgeons office just for one month checkup this week um, range of motion is getting better and I could put on a sweatshirt today so yay this is like huge um yesterday i could open windows like by myself for the first time super exciting and today i can actually put on a sweatshirt so i have my wonder woman wonder witch from salem my brother gave me this uh it's like the most comfortable awesome sweatshirt that i have uh, so i got to wear this for the first time uh because i can actually like use my arms so yay, that's all exciting too. Um, let's see what else. Um, I went out yesterday to like an actual place with humans. Uh, it was just to a, an herb um, seminar, a little like um, just a couple of hours spent basically meditating in an herb garden, um, but it was not at my house. It was uh, at someone else's house at some uh, at a beautiful farm up in, uh, in Montague and um, I saw other humans and so that was really nice um, so progress things are going in the right direction and um, let's see there was something else something else um, oh yeah I don't need chemotherapy yay yay I went to the oncologist today and she said that my tumor is low enough grade and the, the everything was caught early enough, so I don't need chemo. Woohoo! I'm just doing a little happy dance because um, that's pretty freaking awesome. I was nervous about this appointment. I was nervous about what she was going to tell me. I knew that the cancer was, it was like stage 1C, so the... Um, the the range of staging for cancer is from zero to four um and i i don't know how it works how it breaks down with other types of cancers but with breast cancer um stage zero is called pre-cancer it's um it's when you have uh dcis which is uh, ductal carcinoma in situ which is a like it hasn't gotten to cancer yet, but it's still like developing a tumor inside the duct, but it hasn't spread out. It hasn't become invasive. I had invasive ductal carcinoma, which is the most common one. And that is, um, so once it goes to that, it's gonna be either stage one, stage two or three, um, depending on the severity and the extent of it. Uh, and stage four of any cancer is cancer that has uh, metastasized or spread outside of the original tumor location to another point in the body. Um, so we knew that I did not have metastatic cancer because when we tested the lymph nodes, the lymph and the lymph nodes came back negative. 
So we knew that there was no other cancer throughout the body. Um, so it was just a question of the uh, aggressiveness of the tumor that I had, the tumors that I had. Um, and so we were waiting for the results of that testing and they came back and the, the testing is called oncotype testing. Onco meaning cancer, type meaning type. So basically the type of cancer. And it's really a test to determine how well your tumor, that particular tumor, uh, will respond to chemotherapy. Um, it's, it's, uh, it tests for 21 different genes within the tumor to see how aggressive it is, if it's gonna, you know, if it was something that's gonna, you know, continue to grow, and basically assess the risk of recurrence. And so in my case, where my cancer was contained in the left breast, just in those tumors, um, and which were then removed, um, so which also technically means that I'm cancer free right now because the cancer was removed from my body and the oncologist was like, yeah, there's technically that means you're cancer free. I mean, there's always little cancer floaty cells, um, but we're good. Um, so it was just a matter of if those tumors that were in there, even though they were removed, if they were super aggressive and they left any lingering things behind, then there was a higher chance that those, that, that those cells that were left behind would develop into a future another cancer, which is called a recurrence. Um, and the score, that test, when they, got, they do that, um, it's given a range from one to 100. And one being low, one being that there's a low risk of this, you know, the whatever, however they, you know, write down the scores for these um, 21 uh, genomes that they test, genes that they test for. Um, the lower the score, the better. And basically anything from 25 to 100 is considered high, and that's considered a recommendation for chemotherapy. So basically, your low range is under 25. So one to 25 is your low to moderate range, um, and the the side effects of chemotherapy are not considered worth it for the benefit that chemotherapy might offer. Conversely, if it's 25 to 100 then the assessment is that the side effects of chemotherapy, as horrible as they are, are worth the risk or are worth the benefit that the chemotherapy will provide by knocking back those tumor cells that are still, you know, potentially in the body. Um, my score came back as 18. So 18 is like my new favorite number um, because it means that I don't need chemo. And it's awesome. Uh, and it was nice because my oncologist was so happy to tell me that. She was like so excited. And I totally get it because her job of telling people that they have cancer and all of the horrible things that usually go with it, um, like I'm sure she doesn't have a lot of good moments like this. So I could tell that she was really excited to be able to give a patient good news. Um, so yeah, so I am just super, super happy right now. And so um, yeah, I wanted to, uh, to get this out there and share that with folks. Um, so yeah, I'm probably not, I'm not gonna say too much more. I mean, I could go, there's like a whole lot of like medical stuff I could get into with for how the typing is done and the staging and all that. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now because I just want to share and celebrate that um, I don't need chemo. And I'm super excited and it's awesome and I am relieved. I'm so relieved. Um, we still have to talk about potentially um, uh, hormone therapy because that is because I have estrogen and progesterone positive cancer, which means that um, my, my hormones feed the cancer cells and that is very common and so the standard protocol for women any woman um, with hormone receptor positive cancer is to go on the hormone therapy post-surgery post-treatment um, 
for an extended period of time. So, uh, we still have to talk about that. I'm, I'm on the fence on that because that does also have some major side effects. So, but that's a future conversation. Um, it's actually a future uh, appointment that I'm going to be having with uh, the their oncologist um, nurse practitioner where I'm basically gonna one-on-one crash course on this particular medication and the pros and cons of it. Um, so that will be a, a, a follow-up future thing that I do. But for now, I'm just enjoying the fact that I do not even have to worry about, I, it's just, it's gone, it's off my plate. I. I don't even have to, to I, I was worried. I was worried. I was like, oh my God, like I did not want to have to make that decision. And now I don't. And I am so blessed and so grateful and just so ugh, thankful to the doctors who caught this early enough. I like, I love them forever um, because this was caught early. And so ladies get your mammograms that's all i can say um <laughs> get your damn mammograms i don't care what you do get them um because that it saved my life and those doctors who read the mammograms uh and pointed out they were like eh, we don't like the way this looks um if i had waited a year this whole situation may have panned out very differently so good news um, happy, happy, joy, joy, and I can wear sweatshirts and I can move my arms again and like I'm starting to feel like a normal human. So, um, a normal human with, still with plastic breasts, that's, I mean, they'll, they'll always be weird. But, um, yeah, so that's that. And I hope everyone else is doing well and the world is opening and we're all going to be able to see each other again. Um, so, yeah, there's just lots of love. And yes, I still wore my bracelets and my tiara to to the appointment today um so that's it thank you everybody and i will talk to you all again soon okay love you all take care bye bye